Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. From websites and online stores, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hello friends, I hope that you've been well. In today's video, we are going to be doing a real-time painting footage Q&A video. It's been a while since I've done one, but I decided to put a little twist. I am going to be answering your anonymous questions. So yeah, the monthly Patreon rewards this time around the theme I chose was water nymph. This is the sticker design that I did, which I made an exclusive video of the process of on my Patreon page. They have little glitter accents, which I think is super cute. And today we're gonna to be working on the print artwork design. And you still have until November 30th to sign up for the rewards if you wanna receive them in the mail and it comes with the four by six artwork print postcard and then that beautiful glitter accent sticker. If this is the first time you're seeing a video like this from me, basically it's sort of podcast style where I just answer all of the questions as opposed to talking about the process of the illustration. I have plenty of other videos dedicated to the process of my artwork. So if you're interested, I'll have a link to a playlist of all of my acrylic wash illustration videos if you're interested in those. And the way that I like to structure the questions is that the first kind of batch is gonna be art and career related. Then we'll get into some juicy personal and life questions. And then we'll end it off with some fun questions related to music, fandom, etc. So with that being said, let's get into our questions. How do you get the ideas for the Patreon rewards? So I would say this is basically on par with any questions related to where I get inspiration for my art. And I know that it sounds cliche, but truly inspiration comes from so many different elements of my life and what I consume, whether it be movies, music, other artists on Instagram or YouTube, Pinterest, fashion trends that I'm into, like literally everywhere and anything. So with the particular month um, of November this month, Water Nymph, I think it kind of came from the fact that last month I wanted something Halloween spooky-esque and I ended up painting a Medusa character. And so in the vein of mythical creatures, I was kind of in that mode. So I decided to go with Water Nymph. And then next month, I think I'm going to do a Dryad or like Forest Nymph to sort of pair with this one. And yeah, inspiration really just comes from everywhere. And with Patreon, I just go with what I'm in the mood for basically. But I will say that going into next year, I'm actually switching it up and I'm actually thinking of doing a Zodiac portrait series instead of my random themes that I've been doing um, up until now. So I think that'll be really cool just to give myself a little bit of a challenge and also have like an actual overarching theme throughout the entire year. And then that way by the end, we'll have like a whole series of illustrations that are cohesive. And then maybe I can make a calendar or zine or something out of it in the end, which I think will be really cool because it's been quite a long time since I've done like a full series of illustrations. So this is the perfect kind of excuse for it, I think. But before we get into more questions, I just want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is such a flexible platform. You can have a portfolio, you can have a shop, you can have your videos, whatever you like on there. And for me right now, what I really love is being able to have a secret Patreon shop where I can have all of the remaining extras of the prints and sticker rewards available for my patrons to shop if they missed out on a previous month. And if you are a creative, I highly recommend using Squarespace. You can use it for a multitude of different applications and you literally don't need to know how to code at all. It's so intuitive to use. So if you're interested in launching your own website, head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash I'm a wonder for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay. And now it's time to actually get into the painting process. So do you plan to have a zine or an art book in the foreseeable future? I love your work and I think an art book showcasing your workspace and workflow would be absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. That definitely kind of relates back to the first question where I am now sort of thinking about creating another zine in the future with the Zodiac series. I've actually done a Zodiac series in the past before for like an art challenge Inktober thing. 
a couple of years ago and then I did make into a zine. I no longer have that one, but I do still sell a few other zines in my shop, which is available right now. And yeah, the zines are like smaller collections, um, whereas a full blown art book is not something that I have at the moment. And it is something that I would like to do in the future, but I've talked about this with other artist friends and basically I just don't feel as confident in a large enough body of work to make a official art book. So that's why I just have these smaller zines just to sort of supplement that for now, but I definitely want to do an art book in the future. I just don't feel confident enough just yet. I have two questions related to art style here. One is art style advice you wouldn't recommend. What are your opinions on quote unquote valid art styles? And then have you ever thought of changing your art style? And they mentioned that they love to see me try new things. So this is interesting because I actually just recently did an entire video talking about how having a consistent art style I think is overrated and I actually did explore like a chibi art style which is something a little bit out of my usual comfort zone and so yeah just to kind of reiterate what I had mentioned in that video I definitely think that there is a lot of merit in having and exploring multiple art styles. I think that when you are flexible like me when you're just like an independent artist it's nice to just have that freedom to grow and explore and it's more fun and engaging and it applies to different types of things so like the illustration you're watching me work on here this kind of is feels more like an art print type thing but when it comes to like a more simple style like the chibi one that I was exploring it kind of relates better or translates better to like products or stickers because it's a little bit simpler and it just punchier for when it applies to something smaller and if you're an artist who wants to be hired by companies having little variations in art style will allow them to see that you are flexible and that you have a lot to offer because most of the time when you're working for somebody else they are going to have a very specific vision which might not be exactly what you work on but if you showcase that you are capable of other things then to them that just makes you more employable <laughs> How do you manage being an artist when sales are low and social media is absolute shit? Yes, I do feel you on that. I am definitely in that camp of struggling with social media engagement and thus it kind of having a domino effect with sales and kind of other elements of, you know, your career when you're an independent artist, like the type of career that I have. And I'm not going to lie, it has definitely been tough on just my motivation and confidence and, you know, everything related to all of that. But honestly, for me, I think what drives me and keeps me kind of moving forward is knowing that I have no interest in any other career or job. Like I have no interest in, like I said, like working under a company long term. I really enjoy being my own boss and just having the flexibility and freedom to have total control over what I do. And so that's what drives me is just continuing to be grateful for what I do have and what I've built and just knowing that I don't really... I'm not that interested in anything else. So even though it's been hard to persevere when I'm not seeing the same type of growth that I used to, I feel like, yeah, I'm just trying to be really mindful of what I currently have and that having this type of art career, there's always going to be ups and downs. And I'm just currently on a low point right now. And hopefully I'll see some more growth moving into next year. What are your tips for overcoming artist block and in general lack of motivation to create? This is definitely something I've been struggling with a lot. And honestly, something that I think really helped me recently is actually looking at my old artwork when I felt like I was in a place where I was really excited and motivated about art. I don't know why, but it's like, it's just, there's something about it that just sort of reminded me of how I felt and where I was. And also just like, kind of like recalibrating or like 
bringing me back to my the root of like what made me so passionate about art in the first place and so i think that honestly really helps and also having other creative outlets as well so for some people they are really into baking and cooking or it might be crochet or like knit work or something like that for me it's really been styling and fashion has been like another creative outlet for me as well as makeup and you know like just like fashion in relation and related to style so that's been like another creative outlet for me that I've been kind of exploring and so I think that helps just sort of like feed back into your artwork. Do you earn more or less money being self-employed than in your previous employed job? So yeah, I'm very thankful to say that I do make more money as a self-employed artist than I did in my previous employed job, which was a retail salesperson at an art supply store. Prior to that, I worked uh, retail in a clothing store. I worked retail for many, many years part-time, and then I would do art-related things on the side. And a large part of what has kind of allowed me to be a full-time artist and make a larger income than I did in my retail job is that I have multiple sources of income but they all sort of feed into each other so I make income from YouTube revenue as well as sponsorships and then the type of artwork and content that I make from those feed into my patreon page where i sell the prints and then all of that kind of also relates to me also making artwork for my shop where i sell my my work and then i also do conventions where i sell my work as well you know the stuff that i make for my shop is also things that i make and sell at conventions so it all just feeds into one another and it's just very cohesive and yeah that's that's kind of what my career looks like right now and I'm so so thankful what inspired you to start doing YouTube what were some of the challenges you faced when you first started your YouTube career so like I said I used to work retail and I was trying to make art my career but at that point I was only trying things that were local so I was applying to art galleries I started doing art markets and comic cons and I realized that exclusively being local was just very limiting and so I saw other people on Instagram like other artists getting a much bigger reach online and really benefiting from that and I also noticed that a lot of my followers were not exclusive to Canada so YouTube was something that was like on the horizon with other artists and I thought well I am a traditional artist and a lot of people did ask about my art process and what I thought about certain types of mediums and different brands and so being able to demonstrate that in video form made way more sense than trying to explain it via text but Obviously, it was very intimidating because I knew nothing about making videos, how to film my process, the type of equipment that I would need, how to edit a video, how to do audio like for voiceovers and stuff. All those things I had to learn um, on my own and as I went. I did get a little bit of help with the absolute bare basics with um, from my partner at the time. But for the most part, I learned a lot of things on my own. And at this point, a lot of equipment is so much more accessible than it ever used to be. Like you can probably do an entire YouTube video just on your phone. And that's how it always started. I just started filming on my phone. And I obviously have like upgraded a lot of my equipment since my initial start. But yeah, it's just one of those things where you will grow as you start making. And that's like the biggest tip, honestly, is just to start. Be honest. Do you think everybody can become a financially successful artist? Or do you think only those can become successful who can sell themselves and their art very well? Unfortunately, I do think that the reality is not every single person who's passionate about art and wants art as their career is necessarily going to be financially successful in an independent way. It is not easy to become a full-time artist. And I do think that you do have to have other skills and viewpoints other than being a skilled artist. 
similar to how when you watch like those singing competitions there will be hundreds of really really talented singers but only a very very small percentage of them are going to actually succeed in a singing career and i think the same could be said for being a full-time artist or being an artist um, as a career it's one of those things where it is a full package and obviously there are different many different avenues and levels of success as an artist but i do unfortunately agree that a lot of what makes a successful artist isn't exclusively their art you do need to have something that makes you stand out. You need to be providing something unique to the community and you have to find ways to resonate with an audience. Unfortunately, I couldn't tell you the secret formula necessarily. You really just have to put yourself out there and just be as genuine and authentic as you possibly can be to yourself. And that was what was very important to me when I was kind of embarking on this you know, solo art journey was that I really wanted to inject who I was as a person into everything that I did. Um, that's why I was very adamant about making sure that I had voiceovers for my YouTube videos and that I would, you know, explore things that were outside of art exclusively, like talking about the things that I consume and sharing like vlogs about my life and what I get up to as a person as well as sharing how I make my artwork. So I think that is kind of how I've managed to kind of build my audience, but you don't have to necessarily show your personal life in order to have a successful art career. It really does just look different for everybody, but that's just my personal experience with it. What's it like being your own boss? Is it hard? Is it easy? It's definitely both. And I would say that it's definitely not for everybody. You have to be very disciplined, but you also have to have really strong boundaries between your work and life balance. Because when I first kind of embarked on being an independent artist, I was definitely overworking myself because I was like, well, I'm my own boss and I have no specific schedule, which means I need to work all the time. And that really burnt me out and was just not sustainable because it was just like really affecting my well-being and now I've gotten a lot better with setting you know certain boundaries on when I need to work when I should rest and you know take time to myself but yeah you are totally on your own when you're on boss you don't have someone else to refer to for advice you don't have someone to turn to when something goes wrong you have to wear a lot of different hats and yeah it is really challenging and you have to learn a lot of new things constantly but I definitely think that for me and the way that I like to work the pros outweigh the cons is there any videos or sponsorship that you've come to regret this one I actually only have one that comes to mind and it was really really early on in my YouTube career and it was a paint slash art supply video of a brand that I wasn't familiar with and at the time I just I said yes immediately because it was one of those things where I was so new to YouTube and I think it was one of my very first you know offers for a YouTube sponsored video and so I obviously was just like jumping at the chance for to work with any company but unfortunately when I had already agreed to do the video and I received the art supplies, I realized that the quality of the art supplies wasn't up to par with what I typically used. And so, yeah, I did have some regret of agreeing to something that I just, yeah, didn't do enough research on and wasn't familiar with the brand. Thankfully, it ended up working out fine because I just was very firm in my YouTube video saying that the art supplies were more suitable for like beginners or kids or you know like hobby people and not for serious artists because that's definitely was the case like the the quality of the art supplies was not on par with a professional grade 
art supplies. So that's how I navigated that. I was just very honest with the language that I used in the video. And yeah, since then I've learned my lesson and I only agree to art supply sponsorships when I'm confident that the art supplies are going to live up to my expectations. Do you feel super accomplished having your own brushes come out? Do you plan on further custom products like medium slash canvases? Can't wait to get my hands on the brushes. Thank you so much. So for those of you who don't know, I am coming out with my own custom paint brushes. They are the brushes you see me using throughout this entire video. And yeah, I feel really, really good about them. I'm very excited about this kind of you know, custom product and it's my first time making something quite like this and I'm very happy with how they turned out. I did recently come across uh, a few different artists that I follow who've come out with custom eyeshadow palettes, like makeup eyeshadow palettes, which I think is so cool. Obviously very different from an actual art supply, but I love makeup and the idea of having a custom eyeshadow palette sounds amazing. So that's like the only thing that's kind of been on my mind in terms of customization. But other than that, I'm going to just relish in these beautiful paintbrushes. Can we see a collab or friend video soon? I miss silly Elise videos and I wonder if your viewers would boost if you and other YouTubers did videos for each other's channels, draw or chat, I'd watch either. I know you have a Toronto crew. Well, thank you so much for giving a shout out to my videos that I've done with my friend Elise. I absolutely love those videos. For those of you who don't know, quite a while ago, it's been a while since we've done it, my friend Elise and I have done a couple of videos where we wrote down a bunch of like Ghibli or Disney characters and like put them in a hat and we picked them out and drew them from memory. So it was definitely like a much more like, yeah, silly, goofy, fun time. And it's a little different from my usual art content, but they are so much fun to do. And she and I have been talking about doing another one for quite a while, but we just haven't gone around to doing it. But one of the ideas that we have is to you know, same format of drawing characters from memory, but instead of Disney or uh, Ghibli characters specifically, we would write down a bunch of our childhood crushes in terms of fictional characters. So I think that is still on the table. We just have to find time to do it, but I would absolutely love to do a video with her like that again. In terms of other YouTube collabs, I've mentioned a collab video to a couple of artist friends in the past, but we've just never committed to it because we're not really sure what we would do and when we find, you know, how would we find time to like fit it into everyone's schedule? But yeah, I, I'm definitely not opposed to the idea of doing some kind of, you know, YouTube video collab with fellow Toronto artists. It's just a matter of like figuring out what we would do exactly. But I'm glad to know that someone's interested in that. Do you enjoy not suitable for work art slash stories? And would you ever make NSFW art yourself? I absolutely love spicy artwork and content. I'm totally here for it. I follow tons of artists who make spicy artwork. I actually feel like I have made spicy artwork in the past. I feel like I don't make as much of it anymore because of YouTube and just seeing how unfortunately a lot of artists get flagged or have their work taken down. Even when I think that, you know, the type of NSFW artwork that I prefer and consume are usually quite tasteful. And the type of stuff that I had made is pretty tame in the grand scheme of things. I've always loved American pinups and that's kind of where a lot of my inspiration comes from, especially for that type of work that uh, when I do dabble in that. So yeah, I'm here for spicy artwork so long as it's done tastefully and in a way that is empowering. Tell us about your first experience with art as a child. So I don't have like an exact memory of like first experiences, but I will say that I actually started out drawing almost exclusively animals when I was younger. So it definitely started out with Disney characters and then kind of went into Hamtaro and T.Y. Beanie Babies and like, yeah, just anything that was animal, which is really interesting because I almost exclusively draw and paint people now. Who was your crush in middle school? 
This is so funny to me because this was actually the very first question that I got when I opened these up. So I had a few, as I'm sure most of us did. Um, but the one that I'll share with you is that he was the one that introduced me to Daft Punk. Um, I think this is really interesting to me because at the time, at that age, Daft Punk was not seen as cool. I think at that point, hip hop was definitely dominating the music industry at the time or like what was popular. And I remembered he was really into Daft Punk and everyone was like, oh, techno music is lame, whatever. Um, and then I remember him sharing it with me and it was all uh, it was around the world. And I was like, they just say around the world the whole time. And he's like, yeah. And I was like, I'm into it. Um, and to this day, I absolutely love Daft Punk. And now Daft Punk, I definitely think is seen as cool. So it's just really interesting to see how, you know, people's minds change and taste and all those things. So anyway, that's a little tidbit of my one of my middle school crushes. Do you ever want kids slash marriage? So for those of you who don't know, I just turned 32 and at this point in time, I still don't have a desire for kids. So I have a feeling that will not change anytime soon. Obviously never say never, but I have never had an interest in kids. So I think it's safe to say for the most part that I probably will not be having kids. And marriage is something that I'm open to, but not quite as like die hard about it. Obviously having like a life partner sounds nice, but marriage is not something that I'm like dead set on necessarily. The worst date you've ever been on Oh my gosh, people who know me in real life definitely have heard this story and it's very long and detailed, but basically the short form version of it is that I went on a first date with a guy, we met up at a bar, had one drink, and then he was like, you know what, let's go to another location. And I was like, okay, sure. I thought he meant another bar. Turns out that was not the case. He was taking me straight to his apartment, which was directly above the bar that we were just at, which he had picked. So clearly he had a whole plan set out, which I think is gross and is very presumptuous. But even though I should not have went up to that apartment, I was just feeling very curious. So I told my friend where the address was and I went up to his apartment and nothing bad happened. But I will say, unfortunately, long story short, he did end up singing jazz music to me and it was so cringy. But the entire time I was like, you know what? This is going to make for a hilarious story later. And it did. And I have recalled this jazz singing scenario to many of my friends. If you want to know more about it, maybe bring it up in a live stream and maybe I'll be feeling up to uh, telling you guys the whole story. Are you comfy sharing your sexuality? You draw a lot of really beautiful girls and some LGBT plus couples. And I was just curious. You don't owe anyone anything though. So completely disregard this if you're not comfortable. Thank you so much for being so gracious and sweet. I actually have gotten this question before and I would always reply with, unfortunately, I am straight. And I have been questioning it quite a lot lately. I mean, I've questioned it over the course of my life, I feel like, but I've been questioning it a lot, a lot, a lot lately. So I suppose I'm in my figuring it out era. So TBD, to be announced, I suppose. I'm not entirely sure if I am 100% straight anymore. How has your mental health been and how has it affected your everyday life, art, etc.? Make sure to take good care of yourself too. Don't forget to eat good food and drink water. Thank you so much for the kind words. As I kind of alluded to earlier on in the video and probably to my patrons all year, it has been a little bit of a struggle bus on my end and I'm sure many of you can relate because yeah, I just feel really defeated right now. And sometimes I feel okay, sometimes I don't. And sometimes I go through all these different emotions within a single day, but I think that it's fair to have these feelings, even though like 
on a global scale, like trials and tri tribulations that I've been going through are so insignificant. But I think that is a very human experience. And I think that it's okay to recognize that we are not perfect and no nothing's ever going to be perfect. But the best that we can do is be grateful for what we have. Be kind to yourself and just keep trying. Just keep chugging along and do your best. So I'm really appreciative to have you guys as this really lovely, supportive community. And I really hope that my videos and my content and my art can continue to bring some kind of solace, some kind of joy, uh, feel like a safe space for you. And that's what I'm just going to keep continuing to do. And I really appreciate any and all of you who continue to stick with me on this little art journey. Because, yeah, I think that having art, being an artist and making it your career, it's very personal. And so it's really hard to disassociate or separate your art from your everyday life. And so it all just feels very interchangeable to me. I think that I tend to place a lot of value on myself when it comes to how I feel about my art and how well it's being received. So I just, yeah, it's, it's really hard. I think all around, I just need to be kinder to myself when it comes to my art and just me as a person in general. And yeah, they're all just very intertwined with each other. So I just want everyone to know that if you're still struggling with this as well, you're definitely not on your own with that. How do you deal with loneliness? I feel like as I grow older, my social circle has decreased and I also do not have as much time or energy to devote to my friendships. I also feel like I struggle to make new friends in college. Any advice? I would say that with your current friendships if you feel like you don't have the time or energy for them then just communicate that like i think that being open and honest and vulnerable with your friends and um, just telling them where you're at i think that will really really help and if they're you know if they're your friends they'll understand and whatever it is that you're going through you just let them know like hey I'm really busy or I've been really stressed out this week like can we reconnect you know at this time or whatever just like being open and honest with them and it can be as like simple as like sending them a funny little meme just so they know that you're thinking of them it doesn't have to be like you know a two-hour phone call or um, like a whole weekend hangout or anything like that um, just trying to find little ways to let them know how you're feeling, where you're at, and like that you're still thinking of them. And then when it comes to new friendships, I feel like when you're in school, in college, it's like the perfect place to meet new people because you're just surrounded by lots of other students and lots of other people who are like-minded. This is to say that if this isn't online, of course, if you're actually going to school in person. For example, the way that I made one of my first friends in college was she had like a Harry Potter book just sort of like sticking out of her bag. And I was like, hey, I also like Harry Potter and we've been friends ever since. So, you know, just like putting yourself out there, going to coffee shops, hanging out at the library, like you could compliment someone's sweater, you know, just like trying to find ways to connect with people and yeah, just have an open mind. How do you get the inspo for your outfits? I really love your style. Thank you so much. Um, kind of similar to the question about how I get ideas for Patreon and my artwork and videos. Inspiration comes from a lot of places, but I would say in terms of fashion, a lot of inspiration right now has come from K-pop is a definitely a humongous inspiration style wise. I also follow um, different style outfit people on TikTok. And I've also been really enjoying a number of fashion girlies on YouTube as well, particularly Steal, Steal the Spotlight. I feel like she and I have so many common interests in the kind of pop culture that we consume, especially K-pop and anime. And she does amazing style related videos. So I highly recommend checking her out. I also really love Kathleen Illustrated as well. She has a really fun, quirky style and personality and she does a lot of thrifting videos so I highly recommend checking those two out. 
If you could dye your hair a crazy color or colors without worrying about damage or outfit clashing, what would it be? I've mentioned this before and I'm still dream of it. I would absolutely love to have a split hair dye situation where half of my head is my natural black hair color and then the other half is like a silvery platinum blonde. I love that look. I've seen it on a lot of different K-pop stars, particularly I think I love it on Hong Joon from ATs and Jackson Wang. But yeah, that would be my dream hair for sure. Favorite item in your wardrobe right now? I really tried to think hard about this question because my friend and I do a lot of thrifting and I have also been perusing around and getting things from Depop as well. So I couldn't really narrow down something individual but I will say I am absolutely loving pleated skirts midi skirts plaid skirts I feel like that's like a really common thing that's like a staple in my wardrobe style right now and a lot of things that I've been thrifting have been kind of in that category so I am definitely a skirt girly I love the look of pants but pants I find are so much harder to find in terms of like having them fit me right and being confident in them so I'm here for skirts right now for sure and just to name a couple other things, I just recently got from Depop, I got this leather trench coat, which is giving me a little bit of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, very 90s, I'm obsessed. It's a little bit too cold for it now, unfortunately, but I look forward to busting it out when it's warmer again. And then also I just got on Depop as well, a secondhand Vivian Westwood wallet. It's red with like gold hardware. It's absolutely beautiful and I'm so obsessed with it. If you could make anything popular slash mainstream, what would it be? And if you could make anything popular, no longer trendy, which one and why? I find this a really fascinating question and I really thought about it. And honestly, maybe this is a cop-out answer, but I wish that people were less judgmental so that we can all just unabashedly and unapologetically enjoy the things that we want to enjoy and be as extra as we want because I feel like when I think about the things that I'm really passionate about but then sometimes feel a little bit sheepish about I don't necessarily want them to be mainstream so that it's I feel more accepted but more so that I just don't have to feel insecure that I'll be judged. So for example, like when I was in high school, I was really, really into anime and that was something that wasn't seen as cool at the time. So I felt really guilty and like, I felt like a weirdo for it. Anime definitely has come around and it's like a definitely more widely accepted, but I feel like if we just weren't like if people in general just weren't as judgmental then I could have just in continued to enjoy anime throughout my entire life without feeling judged and right now I feel like sometimes I want to dress a certain way but I get a little bit self-conscious about looking too extra or being like too dressed up for the current thing that I'm going to so again I think that just feeling like people are not going to be as judgmental, which just sort of solve all of those problems in terms of what needs to be or what I want to be trendy or popular. And then in terms of what I wish wasn't popular that is trendy is low rise jeans. <laughs> I think that for people who like low rise jeans and look good in them and feel good in them, then that's great. But for me, I'm just not a low rise jeans person for myself. So that's my one little qualm, but I'm not going to judge people for it. Obviously, um, that's just a trend that I can't subscribe to. <laughs> if you had to name an anime character who is most like you, who would it be? Or has someone ever told you that a certain character reminds them of you? I don't know why this is something that I think I should have a better answer for because I have been consuming anime for so long. But for some reason, I can only think of Usagi slash Sailor Moon. I think there's something relatable about her because she is kind of reluctant, I guess, to like participate in the things that she's supposed to be participating in. Like she just wants to like chill. And I think that's kind of where I'm at right now is I just want to chill. Um, but 
I will say this is not an anime character, but when my birthday rolled around this year, my two friends had gifted me a Dragulora doll, a Monster High doll. I'm actually not super familiar with Monster High, but when I pulled her out of the box, I was like, oh my God, this is me. Uh, and then when I messaged them about it, they're like, oh yeah, we always joke that Dragulora is basically you. So I thought that was amazing. So that is my current fictional character persona, I think. What is your favorite non-Ghibli anime movie? I feel like there's a humongous list of anime movies that I've been wanting to watch, but just haven't gotten around to, like Bell and Your Name. And there's, I can't list, I can't think of any more at this moment. The Girl Who Leapt Through Time. Like there's so many highly regarded anime movies out there that I haven't seen, but I want to watch. So I feel like my answer is really silly just because this is what's coming to mind right now. But I want to say the Digimon movie. And I know that sounds really dumb. And I don't even know if that's the real answer because I haven't seen it in quite a while. But I was just thinking about it recently. And I just remember thinking like the Digimon movie is actually so good from my memory. I think the last time I saw it was in college, but it's amazing. It's actually so good. I'm going to rewatch it soon and maybe I will still confirm that it is a great anime movie. In any case, underrated, fantastic movie. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> Who is an anime character that everyone loves but you hate? I wouldn't say everyone loves this character, and I guess in their defense, I haven't seen the entirety of Hunter x Hunter, but this character is extremely popular, Hisoka. I don't understand. When I went into Hunter x Hunter, I knew that he was really popular, and then I started watching it, and I was like, wait, what? He is so creepy, y'all. Like, he gives me the creeps, he gives me the ick, it makes my skin crawl. Like, I get that he has an interesting character design, but like... I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't understand. That's, that's, yeah, I cannot do it. <laughs> if you could be any anime character for a year, who would it be and why? I would want to be Haruhi in Oran High School Host Club. I mean, I probably don't really need to explain it in detail why, but hello, like she gets to pretend to be a boy. She goes to a beautiful, rich school and she gets to hang out with a group of beautiful men and hang out and have tea parties with girls and get to dress up and live this like luxurious rich lifestyle at school it sounds amazing i would love to be her for a year that would be amazing <laughs> and also tamaki was always my favorite and he adores her so that would be an added bonus for sure if you were a witch, what would you choose as your animal familiar, mythical beings welcome to? Oh my gosh, I was like really trying to think of mythical creatures that I would be interested in choosing because that just seems like a more interesting choice. But honestly, I think maybe I would land on a snow leopard. I think they're just so beautiful and I am a lover of cats. So I feel like, you know, a big cat would be amazing. And... I was also thinking about that show slash series, His Dark Materials, and they're technically not familiars, they're called daemons, but basically James McAvoy's character has a snow leopard as com his companion, and I'm like, yes, I want that. <laughs> Have you ever watched Arcane? How do you feel about the art style? I loved Arcane. I actually did a few sketches of Vi and Jinx in a previous YouTube video back when it first dropped. I've never played League of Legends, but the show was amazing. The art style is very, very cool. So I highly recommend checking out Arcane if you haven't seen it yet. Do you like NCT? If not, would you consider listening to him? I do like NCT. I'm very casual listener though. I feel like I'm already part of so many K-pop group fandoms at this point. I just can't add another, but I do enjoy NCT's music and I do know Mark to a degree just cause I got to support my fellow Canadian. <laughs> Who is your crush? Well, let me tell you, it is. Mingyu from Seventeen. <laughs> and honestly, it's just constantly rotating between all of the various K-pop idols that I am obsessed with. Staying Delulu is the Salulu. 
And on that very serious note, that is the final question that I have to answer today. I apologize that I didn't get to all of the questions. I ran out of time. I'm so chatty. I tried to be like really concise with my answers this time around to try and fit as many questions as I could. But in any case, I really appreciate you all submitting your questions. I think we got some really interesting ones and I think that we hit some topics that I've never really talked about before in the past. So anyway, if you enjoy this type of video, I'll have a link to the playlist of my previous question and answer videos where I answered a lot of things that were asked about and I didn't cover in today's video. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this illustration. As a reminder, this is the Patreon November print reward link in the description if you want to join my patreon before november 30th to receive this print and the sticker in the mail and yeah with that let me know in the comments what fictional character you resonate with the most for me i know i said sailor moon earlier but if we're also throwing in non-anime characters into the mix i also feel like raven from teen titans daria from daria as well as tina belcher from bob's burgers all of those characters for some reason sort of resonate with me in different ways i know that's like the most random selection of characters but in any case that's my recipe for who i am i think i would love to know who you would have as a character recipe for yourself let me know and i'll catch you in the next one bye Thank you.